Hello and welcome to another one of these ADD videos. Today we're going to be discussing solving basic trig equations. What happens when you see an equation in this form here, sine of theta equals one half? What is that asking you? Well, that's asking you what theta values, what angles have a sine of one half? How do you go about solving those equations? Well, the first step is to get any numerical values that uh, are attached to the trigonometric function on the other side. So for instance, if this was, you know, uh, three plus, or actually three minus six sine theta, you'd have to subtract the three over, divide both sides by six. I'll show you an example of that in the example videos, okay? So after you do that, you're gonna take the arc sine of both sides or the sine inverse, however you wanna write it down. And what that's asking is you're saying, okay, what angles indeed have the sine of one half? In this case, uh, to get the reference angle, you ask yourself what reference angle has a sine of one half. If you do your chart or whatever you gotta do to do that, a calculator, you'll find out that it's 30 degrees. And once you know it's 30 degrees, you gotta figure out what quadrants you're in. Well, if you remember this acronym, all students take calculus, sine is positive one half here in the first quadrant and in the second quadrant. Okay, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch the trig functions concept video. And if you're restricted to two pi, you just use your little rules for the first quadrant, it's always pi on top with six in the denominator if it's a 30 degree reference angle. And in the second quadrant, it's one less than the denominator, so five pi over six, okay? Uh, if you were doing in degrees, it'd be 30 degrees and 150 for that example. Now, if you're not restricted to zero and two pi like we were in the other one, you'd have to add in this case, a 2n pi, where n is an element of the integers. If you remember, the integers are the positive and negative whole numbers. So if it's tangent or cotangent, the 2 pi is for these four, sine, cosine, cosecant, secant, the reciprocals. If it's tangent, cotangent, it's n pi, because the period for n is, uh, for tangent and cotangent is n, and the period the time it takes for one cycle to repeat is going to be 2 pi. So we, we encounter these answers every 2 pi that the function uh, occurs. If you remember sine and cosine, the graphs basically uh, oscillate between 1 and negative 1. So there will be many regions in which we will get this 1 half value for the sine function every time we hit that graph. There was one, there's another one. Okay, so it occurs all these times. So we have to account for it if it's not restricted by doing that 2n pi thing or n pi depending on the function. All right, so I hope I've cleared things up a little bit. The best way to learn these is to practice. We're going to go through these example videos here. Uh, if you watch the video, so, or the example video. So practice, practice, practice. Thank you and have a nice day.